Hello and welcome back to another episode of Advanced RC Adventures. A2RC here. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start a new adventure with me. Today we have a pretty great Nitro engine overview for all of you today. This is the OS Max 12 CV Hyper. This particular one is the gold gray edition with a 10A slide carburetor. Let's break into this and start the adventure. This is a brand new engine put in long-term storage. It's been cleaned and inspected. Let's get out of the bubble wrap. I have varying ways to mark my engines. This particular one, I've got it right here on a label. It says OS 12 CV Hyper. And um, this was originally or last gone through on 4-12 of 2022. Brand new, cleaned, lubed, inspected with the same designation, gray gold with 10A, and it's ready for break-in. Let's go ahead and open this up take it apart and let's have a little fun. Let's cut the bag open here. We have our desiccant take out. So this is the Hyper 12 CV. This is a great little engine. The iconic gold head for the Hyper. They made uh, two different other style Hyper heads. They have a blue and they have a red. We'll be able to see a red headed Hyper on the channel at a later date. This is a side exhaust engine. This particular arrangement for the gray and the gold is pretty rare nowadays, especially to find one brand new. They are out there, but it's more difficult to find, especially in the bump version. A lot of them had a pull start. And the 10A carb is another one of those rare finds. This is a slide carb. You found the 10As on the CV lineup. The CVRs were kind of the beginning of the club racers, whereas the CV package, the hyper package, was more into that RTR engine arena. So as we do with most all of our overviews, let's go ahead and take off the back plate, get off the carb, have a little walk through, enjoy it while we're doing it. We have a standard butyl rubber slide boot there. This is a two needle carb. We have our high speed needle here and this is a nice upgrade. We have our brass housing for the high speed needle and then an aluminum nipple. We have our low speed needle here which is on the mixing cone side and we have our idle gap adjustment right there. Nice OS on the cast body and we have a pretty standard flat style butyl o-ring there on the bottom. Let's go ahead and give that inner bore a measure. Reach down inside of here with our calipers. This is a standard 5.5 so it's a Roar Legal carb and it's a great kind of option or addition to have a slide version for these CV engines. Go ahead and take off this flywheel nut. And the prop drive washer there. This has a standard shaft. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but this uses the two flat style crankshaft that a lot of the vintage style flywheels used to have. You can also use a collet style flywheel on these as well, so don't worry, you do not have to have one of those two flat style flywheels. 
So let's go ahead and break into this back plate. Take off this back plate here. I always try to look for standard shaft engines that are bump. That's my particular favorite um, setup for the 10th scale touring cars. Also works great for nitro two wheel drive stadium trucks, similar to the low C triple X NT. So we have our bump style back plate. This is a semi interference engine with that little cutout there. This does not have an O ring. This CV lineup uses that paper style gasket there on the rim of the back plate. There's no written designation for up, but when we take a look at that cutout for the semi interference, that tells us that that is up. Let's go ahead and take a look at our internals. Let's pop off this head. The main difference between, or maybe the only difference between the CV and the Hyper is the head itself. These Hyper heads are really nice. These are a full CNC billet machined head. The compression bowl is in, incorporated into the head itself so there's no button. These use standard style plugs, OS standard A3, 8, number 7s hot, medium, and cold can be used. These are a bi-directional head. That means that air can flow through one direction and out, but it can't flow all the way through all of them. But with all the ribs, all the fins here, some great shine cuts, and the lightweight billet CNC machined head offers great cooling and engine protection for this Hyper. While we have this out, let's go ahead and weigh this hyper head compared to the standard CV head. So we have our scale here. Let's go ahead and weigh first the CV V style shaped head. It says OS Max with a shine cut on one side, the Iconic V shape. We're going to talk more about this head when we go over a 12 or a 15 CV and talk about the shape and the design and how and why OS designed it this way and the theory or the idea on the shape and how it worked. So let's go ahead and weigh this. We're going to go over into grams here. We're at 56.4. And let's go ahead and weigh that billet CNC machined head. We're at 41.8. So we're somewhere around 14 or 15 grams lighter weight with these style hyper heads. All of the internal components between the CV and the hyper are effectively the same. But the whole dry weight of this bump start 12 CV is about 190 grams. That's about 10% lighter than the bump start version of the other 12 CV style. That's roughly 20 grams lighter than the CV version. But the larger majority of that weight is taken up by this updated and upgraded head. Let's get this scale out of the way. Let's look at some of these head bolts. So for the CV lineup, an M2.5 is pretty standard. And these are just about 12 millimeter in length. So not a very robust, but it's still a decent quality head bolt for this lower power 12 CV Hyper. Let's get this head shim up off of the mat. This is an aluminum head shim. Let's go ahead and give this a measure for folks that are always interested in about that. This is a 0.2 aluminum head shim. 
and that is a pretty standard size for a 12 size engine. Generally speaking, these are rated for somewhere between 10, 15, and 20% nitro. Let's keep on the adventure. Let's take a look at the block. Let's get this sleeve out, look at the internals, and keep going. Take a look at that sleeve here in just a second. Let's get this piston out. This uses a floating style wrist pin. We have that plastic or Delrin puck on either side of the wrist pin here. There's no clips holding it in, so this is a floating style. There's no oil grooves around the piston itself. This is a cast piston and then later machined. We have an all aluminum connecting rod, brass inserts, and the oil groove is on the bottom there. I don't know if you're able to see that. There's no skirt cut out here on the piston. So a pretty typical piston and rod assembly. Notice here this hole. This is very similar to what we saw on the 12E and the 15E. This port or hole is for the boost port. If you are interested in learning more about the hidden boost port style, you can check out that 15FE adventure whenever you would like to. Let's take out the crank. This is a decent little crank here. The entire balance lobe is not there, so they took some out to keep things a bit lightweight. It's the same size bearing on front and rear with a decent size opening. It is not drilled and filled, but it does have a small cut in here for it to keep it a little bit more lightweight as well as with that balance lobe being cut out. Let's go ahead and measure that induction bore for the crank. 6.3, so this is relatively small for a 12 size engine. The larger ones, more of the club race scene, you're gonna be 6.5 near 7 millimeter bore. Still a decent little crank for this Hyper 12. It uses chrome steel bearings front and rear, all aluminum block, on this side, we have 12 CV. On this side, we have a shine cut for the OS Max, and it's very pretty if you ask me. Down inside, you're not gonna be able to see it real well here, but we have that hidden boost style arrangement, so there's no boost port cut out on the block. But on the inside, there are transfer ports, and then that side exhaust window. So let's step over here to our sleeve. These 12 CVs were a direct replacement in power for the HPI 15FE. Both engines support about 1.5, 1.6 horsepower, around 30K RPM. But what the OS provided is a little bit better quality, not just for the internals, but also for the carb. They could tune a lot better and have a little bit better performance compared to those HPIE and FE style. So let's look at this sleeve here. Notice the silver looking color. These are ABN construction. So we have aluminum piston. We have a brass sleeve that's nickel coated. The exhaust port is pretty typical. It's just a rectangle. The slightest bit of bevel there on the end. And then we move over to our transfer ports. These are relatively small, but kind of typical for these RTR style engines. And this has, again, just a small amount of bevel there on the end and having some direction move towards that front. Move over to the other transfer port. Same kind of thing. Smaller transfer port. It's relatively small, but effective for this style and horsepower engine. And then we come over to the boost port. It's a relatively small, again, rectangular boost port. 
Go ahead and watch that 15 FE video to have it explain a bit more. But that flow goes up underneath the piston and makes its way into the top portion of that combustion chamber to help with the mixing for the boost port. There's a small bevel here on the bottom end. Nothing tricky, nothing fancy at all for this 12 CV style engine. Nonetheless, it's a great vintage iconic engine that everybody I'm sure will love. We have here too to have a nice little pairing. This is an HPI 940 two chamber metal pipe with a 950 header. Pair it up well with a little bit of color for that hyper gold. If you like these style engine overviews, then feel free to check out a few more. It's hard not to fall in love with all of these engines for our nitro hobby. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like 10 scale nitro, and especially touring cars, then this is the place to be. And thanks for taking the adventure with me.